Resurrection Day. These are announcements and observations for today, April 17, 2022. Today is Easter, which commemorates the resurrection of Jesus and his ascension to heaven. The youth ascension to heaven. The youth ministry is in charge. Board meeting will be held this Tuesday, April 19th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Bible study will be held this Wednesday, April 20th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Shakespeare car rehearsal will be held this Thursday, April 21st at 6.30 p.m. Next Sunday, April 24th, our first pastoral candidate, Reverend Roosevelt Watson, will be preaching. Preaching. Please make plans to attend. Amen. Good morning, West Canyon. Hear the congregation's request. I am happy to inform that I that the pastoral search committee has selected the teaching arrangements for the three candidates. Here is the Sunday school and Bible study dates. Reverend Roosevelt Watson Sunday School, May fifteenth at the church. Bible study, May 18th via Zoom. Reverend Shelton Rubin, Sunday School, May 22nd at the church. Bible study, May 4th. Reverend Robert Jamerson, Sunday School, May 8th, the same day he is preaching. He has not let us know the Bible study date yet, but he will either May the 11th or May the 20th. Thank you for putting your trust in this community, and we pray we can continue with God's help and yours in finding the right shepherd to lead West Kingdom to the next level in the kingdom building. In Christ, the West Kingdom Pastoral Search Committee. You can pay your tithes and offerings via cash up, dollar sign, West Kingdom. Mother Carol Pugh would like to say a special thank you for your thoughts and prayers for her fam her and her family. She truly appreciates each and every one of you. Bless you all. Amen. You can pay your tithes and offerings via Cash App, Dollar Sign West Canyon, or by bringing to the church on the first and third Sunday from 12 to 1, or in per person each Sunday, or by mailing to our P.O. Box, West Canyon Missionary Baptist Church. P.O. Box 431, Millington, Tennessee 38083. Our birthdays for this week are on Saturday, the 23rd, is Brother Capel K.J. Eugene Jr. Happy birthday. Our altar call program will be incorporated with our devotion led by Brother jo Jonas Wright. Let us please remember that six shut in and those who need special prayers. Our West Canyon members are Pastor Emeritus and Miss Ford, Mother Barbara Douglas, Mother Inez Harris, Mother Flozana Henderson, Brother Thomas Lacey, Mother Shirley Lewis, Sister Carly the Merriweather, Brother Harold Pugh Jr., Mother Carolyn Seals, Mother Ruth Strong, Mother Denise Thomas, and Sister Dilsey Williams. All military personnel, Brother Patrick Allen Jr., Brother Marshawn Fry, Sister Samantha Lacey, Brother Gary Jackson, Sister Erica Jordan, Brother Quinta Jones, Brother Joseph Anthony Musso, Brother Malik Pugh, Brother Javante Seal, Sister Kenesha Smith, Brother Leroy Snell, and Brother Corey Strong. Please remember the family and friends of our West Canyon members. Brother Latarius Aaron, Brother Hubert Beard, Brother Fred and Nellie Bell, Sister Kenesha Burks, Brother Andrew Burnett, Brother Harvey, Hart Harry Hillman, Sister Rosemary Banks, Brother Carla Gandy, Brother Charles Hall, Brother Calvin Jones, Brother William and Sister Angie Jones, Brother Wayne Kelso, Brother Janie Parker, Sister Dorothy Patterson, Brother Whit. Reverend William Reynolds and family, Sister Danielle Smith, Brother Michael Shipp, Sister Fellowship, Sister Dorothy Taylor, Sister Grace Taylor, Brother John Thomas, Sister Lisa Warfield, Brother Ronald Wilson, Brother James Rivery, 
and Brother Benjamin Ransom. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Good morning, West Canaan. As we begin our devotion on this Easter morning, let us simply reflect on the fact that Easter is the only time of the year that reminds us that it is safe to put all your eggs in one basket. burial. <laughs> Death could not hold them, and so Christians everywhere cannot help but give a high praise like winning at the basketball game. A cr As Christ's story reaches the most memorable mo moment in history, the resurrection which gives us hope, it's Resurrection Sunday. For our scripture reading, I am reading from 1 Peter 1 and 3 and 18 through 21. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, now we live with great exultation. Verse 18. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value it was the pleasure, precious blood of Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as the ransom long before the world began. But now, in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God, and you have placed your faith and hope in God, because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. So West Canaan, with great expectations, hope, and faith, just put all your eggs in the basket of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who not only came to bring hope, he is our hope. Let us pray. God is good, God is great, let us thank you for this day. God, you just watch over us, keep us safe through the rough yes. times. Watch over people in the hospital. I pray for my grandma grandma after her surgery and everybody else that had a surgery and you just watch over them watch over. watch over the people that are in rough times that don't have a job that you can get them a job yeah. and they will be, have better life yeah. you watch over us keep us safe to anything that we're going through and you love on us jesus name i pray amen, amen. amen.
I'm glad that you can come. We are honored to share this day with you as we worship God's Father and Son. I hope that God has touched your life as we worship side by side. And that you leave this place today with the peace of God inside. For you for you so welcome in this place. And I hope you'll come again to join with us in the fellowship and make some special plans. Whether you are joining us here in the sanctuary or work watching on Facebook Live or Zoom, we trust that this service will be an encouragement to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If there was no resurrection, there would be no hope for mankind. We would have had no second chance and no peace of mind. The love of God is clearly seen in the sacrifice of his son, who took our punishment and our sin and offered redemption for everyone. Had not Jesus died on the cross, had his life not been sacrificed, there would be no forgiveness of sin and there would be no eternal life. Jesus did not he did no wrong and knew no sin, but for love's sake he died, so our sin death could be paid in full. He gave himself to be crucified. The good news of salvation comes to us by the way of the cross. God raised up Jesus, raised up Jesus from the dead, so that no man need to be lost. Oh, what love the Father has for us, shown by the gift he freely gave, so that we could. Have a second chance. God raised Jesus from the grave. Love to the fullest once from our earth. He arrived by here by, by means of a heavenly birth. From the very beginning, most everyone knew there was something so special the child would do. As time prevailed, he became a man, teaching us love from God's own hands. Though to some he knew he would be such a dread, they never could rest until he was dead. He knew his own faith was from beginning to end. He knew and still loved his betraying friend. He carried his cross in his own two feet to die for our sins and our total defeat. Why did he do it? No reason but love. He wanted to help us to heaven above. Who was this man with such merciful love, none other than Jesus, our Savior above? Amen. Amen. Resurrection. Ridicule and mock, nailed to the cross, each of his bones, mourning his loss. Sat down from high, placed in a cave, a movable stone, in front of his grave. The Roman soldiers guided, the soldier, the soldier room, rejected attempts, into the tomb. Interest still, so no one could steal Christ's body, which had a greater people. Then on the third day, Mary cannot believe inside of the grave. I mean, inside of the cave, no back to grief. On Sunday, he was seen, he was said, now God has risen his son from the dead. We've been given the greatest gift, the most precious, wonderful promise ever made. It's about the resurrection. This truth will never fade. His gift is for all eternity, not just a moment in time. He's given us a mind-boggling gift. He was innocent of his crime. Released from the burden of our sin, the veil was torn to free. A promise delivered as the prophecies told, the ancient ones could see. Nothing could separate, no man-made invention. We are saved from our mortal sin by the power of the resurrection. He came and walked with us. With twelve friends, he taught us. He taught and prayed. Three years of dedicated ministry in his blood. Our debt is paid. Thank you.
Resurrection Sunday, isn't it? I said, this is Resurrection Sunday, isn't it? That means he rose. No doubt about it, he rose. He rose. Early Sunday morning. Somebody know he got up. All power in his hand. you need him. You just call on him. Anybody call on him. You just call on him. Call on him. I tell you, say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to preach you. While you remain standing, It is resurrection. Continuation of Matthew chapter 28, we read verses 1 through 10 as part of our uh, beautiful lesson that uh, Sister Davenport taught this morning, but I want to pick up with verse 11 and conclude with verse 15 of that same said chapter, Matthew 28 verses 11 through 15, and I shall be reading from the New International Version. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. And when the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, 
His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. I want to talk today on this Resurrection Sunday and Easter faith in a Good Friday world. You may be seated and Easter faith in a Good Friday world. Even before the insurrection that occurred last year, many of you who are in my age category will remember the Watergate scandal, which rocked the nation in the early 70s. It created a crisis of credibility regarding faith in government and in our elected officials. Watergate was the building where the break-in occurred. Mm -hmm. right. It was in Watergate where officials of the Republican Party tried to obtain some sensitive documents of the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And in time, bits and pieces of information began to circulate that the crime involved persons in high positions within the government, even some of the right-hand men of the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. Much effort was spent in an attempt to cover up the trail of this deed and to protect those in high positions who might be implicated. Right. And after much investigation, it was discovered that Richard Nixon, the President of the United States, had knowledge of the crime and was in fact a part of the cover-up. Mm -hmm. President Nixon ended up resigning his office mm -hmm. as president and he left that office in disgrace. Yes. People no longer called him Mr. President like they usually call those who leave the office. He came to be known throughout time as Tricky Dick. <laughs> and the term Watergate yes. came to mean a cover-up and a scandal, particularly regarding persons in high places. Those in Watergate tried to cover up the facts. They tried to cover up the truth. But they found it impossible to do so. They tried to live as if certain things had not happened. But in the end, they were not able to do so. In the Old Testament, we're told about another scandal of Watergate proportions. It occurred during the reign of David as king of Israel. You Bible readers remember how David plotted to have Uriah, mm -hmm. one of his soldiers, killed in battle yeah. mm -hmm. yes, so that he could marry Uriah, Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. You remember how he was having an affair with her and she was carrying his child. Mm -hmm. And with the death of Uriah, David thought that he could cover up his misdeeds. Mm -hmm. But it was Nathan the prophet yes. who implicated David yes, and delivered God's word of judgment True. upon him. Yes. Well, in the time allotted to me this morning, I want to share with you the story of another effort to cover up the truth, which is more dastardly and more despicable than Watergate, or even the misdeeds of King David. Right. 
according to Matthew's writing. When Jesus was crucified, the religious leaders remembered his promise mm -hmm. that he would rise again. Yeah. Yeah. While they did not exactly believe Jesus, they feared that our Lord's disciples would be as devious regarding the resurrection promise as they had been in the execution of the crucifixion plan. So to prevent the disciples from stealing the Lord's body from its resting place, they asked Pilate to secure the tomb against theft. You remember how Pilate appointed soldiers to guard the tomb, told them to secure it as best as they could. They sealed the entrance mm -hmm. with a stone and they stationed a guard there. Yeah. Like David and like the Watergate criminals, they secured truth and righteousness in the tomb as best as they could. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, sooner or later, we are going to learn there is no human security system against truth, righteousness, mm -hmm. and the promises of God. All right. No number of lives can bury truth forever. Well. No amount of wrongdoing can bury goodness and righteousness forever. No earthly power can prevent God's promises from coming forth in the fullness of time. All right. All right. Toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and another Mary went to the sepulchre. According to heaven's time plan, there was an earthquake in the vicinity of the tomb where Jesus had been buried. Right. An angel of the Lord descended down from heaven, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. Right. And for fear of him, the gods trembled and they fainted. The women who had come with spices to anoint their Lord's dead body stood still as these fears on God's faint. Although these gods were armed, they were equipped with the finest weapons of the world. They just could not stand. <laughs> When the word of Christ was fulfilled. All right. They could not stand when righteousness right. was resurrected from the tomb. Mm -hmm. The angels told the women of Jesus' resurrection. Instructed them to go tell the disciples that their Lord was risen from, from the dead. And as the women went on their way, some of the soldiers went to the city. They told the chief priest what had happened. The priest then assembled with some of their cohorts. And they planned to enter into a plan of deception. And after some discussion among themselves, they decided to bribe the soldiers with money. Have them tell the people that the disciples came by night and stole the body of Jesus while they were asleep. If word came to Pilate, 
Then intercession will be made on their behalf to keep these soldiers out of trouble. According to the scriptures, the soldiers took the bride, they took the money, they did as they had been directed. The bribery of the soldiers was only one more act of dishonesty among a number of others in the plot by the religious leaders to discredit and to destroy Jesus. When one looks at the way they had already lied and connived, threatened and intimidated to destroy Jesus. One is not surprised that these men of God would stoop to bribery. After all, they had bribed one of Jesus' disciples to betray him. From the beginning, in the initial stages of the plot to stop Jesus, they had compromised themselves. Mm -hmm. There is no right way. There is no good way for one to do wrong. Uh -huh. yeah. Let me say that one more time. There is no right way. Yeah. There is no good way for one to do wrong. Wrongdoing mm -hmm. always involves compromise. At the very outset. Right. It always means starting out. On the wrong foot. Mm -hmm. It means that every step you take. Will always lead you in the wrong direction. Yeah. The journey of wrongdoing. Does not get any better. As we go along. But it always. Gets worse. Instead of having open ears to hear what God was saying or accepting the evidence of God's spirit, God's power in the life of Jesus, you know how these religious leaders were jealous of Jesus. They were threatened by Jesus. Thus causing them to look at Jesus with a critical eye. And you know, whenever jealousy and insecurity are at the root of our actions, we've already started out on the wrong foot. Yeah. The religious leaders, critical eyes, have prompted them to try to discredit Jesus. You remember on one occasion. Jesus had healed a demon possessed man. Who was both blind and mute. And when the Pharisees heard about it. They said that he was Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. The prince of demons. For only Beelzebub. Yeah. Could drive out demons. You know, Jesus knew their thoughts. He was able to read their minds. And he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. Mm -hmm. And every city of household divided against itself will not stand. Mm -hmm. On another occasion, some Pharisees, teachers of the law, came to Jesus, asked him why his disciples broke the tradition of the elders, and that they did not wash their hands before they ate. Jesus said to them, why do you break the command of God for the sake of tradition? God said, you shall honor your father and your mother. 
And anyone who does not do that is to be put to death. When that criticism proved to be of no avail, when our Lord custody shut holes in that criticism, when he left them speechless, you know, they began to plot his downfall. Since they could not trip Jesus up, they used treachery to seize Jesus. These so-called righteous men, they encouraged Judas, you know the story, one of the Lord's disciples. They encouraged him to betray Jesus. They tried Jesus illegally. These righteous men broke all the laws which they held to be sacred, which were supposed to govern the conduct of the Sanhedrin. The high court, they did it all to convict our Lord. They used slander to charge him before Pontius Pilate. They made up a charge which had no truth in it so that Pilate might judge him. Then they used force or uh, threats to force a sentence. When Pilate wanted to clear Jesus, they threatened to report Pilate as a covenant and disloyal to Caesar. Right. They opted for the release of a criminal in order to detain him. Yeah. And when Pilate offered to release a prisoner according to the custom of the Passover season, mm -hmm. gave them a choice of the rabbis right. who was a thief. Yeah. Yeah. Or Jesus, the Son of God. You know the story. They chose Barabbas. They used cruelty to kill Jesus. They asked that he be crucified. And now in our text, they are once again using bribery to cover up the truth. In other words, they were still living in a Good Friday world. My brothers and sisters, Good Friday means that it was humanity's darkest hour. When one thinks of how unjust the crucifixion was, one can easily get the impression that might makes right. That justice is a joke. That goodness is a farce. And that righteousness is of no consequence. When one looks at Good Friday, one can get the impression that God's face had been turned away from the creation. That we had been left to reign. And the actions of human beings who had the power to manipulate and control our destinies to fit their selfish purposes. When one looks at Good Friday, one can get the impression that money and power can control human destiny. Good Friday, or oh, somebody ought to help me here, tells us that bribery and corruption rules this world. Yeah. Good Friday mm -hmm. tells us that we are the masters of our own fate. Mm -hmm. Good Friday tells us we're the captains of our own souls. Good Friday tells us that it's our own thing. That we can do whatever we want to do. There are people today who still act like 
that we are living in a good Friday world. We see today in Mr. Putin's attempt to take over Ukraine as his forces for God and rape their way throughout the land. The religious establishment of Jesus' day was trying to perpetrate one of the greatest hoaxes well. that was ever played on humanity. All right. It was a hoax as big as the one President Trump played right. on the American public yes, saying that the election was rigged yes. and was stolen yes. from him. Yes. It was a hoax as big as the one that Satan played on Adam and Eve well. out in the garden of Eden. Yes, yes uh, they wanted us to believe that the sin of Eden which fashioned Good Friday trial mm -hmm. and that the Good Friday world of sin and violence is still intact. There are those who act as if nothing happened Good Friday right. to change the reign of sin and violence. Some of us have come to declare today that the hoax did not work. All right. The soldiers may have sold out, but the women carried the good news that the resurrection had not been sidetracked. You know, Jesus was not stopped from appearing to the women. He told them, do not be afraid, but go and tell the brothers to go on in the Galilee and there they will see me. Jesus was not prevented from appearing to his disciples as they are simple in fear and said, peace, peace be with you. Yes, this is not a good Friday world. This is a world where Jesus rose. Do I have a witness? This is a world when Jesus Christ has beat back the darkness, this is a world where Jesus is alive. Jesus was not detained from leading his followers to a high mount where he told them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, baptizing them in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Ain't God all right? Well, while some may live as if this world is governed by the darkness of Good Friday. I have come to declare today that something superseded Good Friday. It is an Easter faith which rejoices in the reality of the risen Lord. It's an Easter faith that our Lord is alive. It is a faith that gives us hope. It's a faith that gives us love. It's a faith that gives us justice. It's a faith that forgives us of our sins. Jesus is Calvary's hero. Jesus is the great spawn. Jesus is the conqueror of death. Our Easter faith tells us that right 
that hope, justice, and peace have not been defeated. Not only are they alive, but Jesus, he reigns forevermore. If having an Easter faith means anything, it means that we have a reason for holding on to God's unchanging hand. We have a reason for rejoicing in spite of all that we go through. If we just hold on a little while longer, everything will be all right. Ain't God all right? I say, ain't God all right? Well, I gotta leave you here. But the story is told of an elderly lady who would come to church. She would rejoice every Sunday. If the preaching was good, she rejoiced. If the preaching was bad, she still rejoiced. If the choir sang good, she rejoiced. And if the choir sang bad, she still rejoiced. And one day, someone asked her why she rejoiced all the time, no matter how the services were, whether they were good or whether they were bad. And she said this, if the preaching and singing are good, I feel good, so I rejoice. And if the preaching and singing are bad, I look beyond the preacher. I look beyond the choir. And when I see Jesus, I still rejoice. Good evening, West Haven. I don't know what you're going through. But whatever you're going through, when you see Jesus, you ought to have a reason to rejoice. Easter faith means I can rejoice beyond Good Friday sin. And Easter faith means I can rejoice beyond Good Friday's hopelessness. Easter faith means I can look beyond the violence in the world and I can still see Jesus. Whatever I'm going through, when I got an Easter faith, I can hold on God's unchanging hand. I know that everything will be all right. I can look beyond all that I'm going through. And I can still rejoice. Do you have anything to rejoice for today? You may be down and out. But I can still rejoice. I can look beyond that unemployment. I can look beyond mountain bills. I can look beyond all these high gas prices. I can look beyond all of that and know that if I keep my hand in God's hand, oh, look like I ought to have a witness. That everything, oh, somebody here ought to know that everything going to be all right. I just keep on looking to Jesus. I can just keep on. Rejoice. Yeah. I can even look beyond death. Hmm. All right. See Jesus reign yeah. as the life, as the resurrection. Yeah. And I just keep on rejoicing. I can look beyond the tomb of a good friend. Yeah. Tomb that held death. But I can see the womb of an Easter morning that brought forth life. Yes. 
you know what I do? I just keep on, keep on. rejoicing. Yeah. When I see Jesus reigning, with all power, oh, I'm trying to get out of here. When I see him reigning, with not some power, but when I see him reigning, with all power in his hand, you know what I do? I don't know about you, but I just keep on rejoicing. Songwriter said, The one who died for me. Yeah. I don't care yeah. when I see Jesus. Yeah. When I see Jesus. When I see Jesus. I'm going to just keep on rejoicing. Oh, you don't have to say anything. I'm rejoicing right now. God woke me up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody laid down last night. They didn't get up this morning. But look at you now.
Resurrection Sunday. We prepare now for our Holy Communion service and commemoration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do this in remembrance of our Lord. Amen. Many times we, our tradition here may be the first Sunday, but I think it's always befitting on Easter Sunday. Amen. To remember Jesus and his disciples as they prepared, as he prepared to leave them. Reminding them as often as they eat and drink, they show forth his death and suffering. If anyone has not received uh, the bread and the wine, if you would raise your hands and make sure that you receive that, you'll be able to participate with us. Anyone? Need to receive that. Amen. And certainly we trust that you also have the prayer of confession. Amen. The prayer of confession that we'll be able to participate together. Amen. With that being said, I'm going to ask that we would stand. Amen. Our prayer of confession. Amen. We come again on this blessed Resurrection Sunday morning. If we have the prayer of confession, let us prepare to repeat together. Let us all repeat. This morning, we confess how human we are. While we have not done any great evil, we have failed to do good when we had the chance. While we have not intentionally hurt anyone, we have not always offered healing to the broken. While we can easily accept the witness of the angel in the tomb, sometimes we find it difficult to share this good news with others. Bring us new life where we are tired and stressed. Give us the energy to serve your creation. Transform our heart and hearts into fountains of grace. Forgive us of all the damage we've done. Fill us with the joy of your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, he gives us new life. We pray. Amen. Amen. We know that we have the assurance in God's word that all of our sins are forgiven. First John 1 and 9 lets us know that we confess our sins to God. He is faithful. He's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father, again, we come before you this morning. We come before you today to just thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for this moment that we have to come here on this blessed resurrection morning. Father, the last time that many church doors were open on this Sunday was back in 2019. Mm -hmm. But Father God, between then and now, you continue to watch over us. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just pray you. that you will continue to be with us. Mm -hmm. Continue to strengthen this West Canaan church family. Continue to throw your arms around us. And as we prepare to come to the table, we leave behind us those things that would hinder and hold us back. We come before a table that spread. We come before a welcome that says that whosoever will can come freely without barriers, without hindrances, can come in a spirit of love come to the table that where Jesus is here. Father God, we love you. Love you, we love you, we love you in so many ways. Father God, we pause right now to ask the blessing upon the bread that we will eat. Blessing upon uh, the juice of the grape that we will drink. 
And Father God, we pray that it will empower us with a new spirit to leave this place, live lives that we would be fully committed and fully dedicated followers of you. Be with us now and forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Luke chapter 22. Began on verse 14. Reads on this wise. When the hour came. Jesus said to his disciples. Reclined at the table. And he said to them. I am eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. Before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among you. For I tell you that I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he also took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. For this is remembrance of me. Well, sometimes we may do it a little backwards. We're going to eat the bread. And we want to drink the juice of the grape which is symbolic of the blood that Jesus shed for the remission of our sins. Let us drink together. Now we know in the old days we would come around and we would do right hand of fellowship and just wave at somebody. Amen. We know we're not doing all that. We want to be safe. Amen. Again, we thank God for all of you. This includes our service today. Thank God for our young people. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give our young people a big amen. 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 Singing and everything that was done today. Everything that they did today was so beautiful. Thank you, young people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, parents, for bringing them out. And now may the grace of God, the love and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Go in peace until we meet again.